Hello there, my very good friends. Andy Murray here for What Culture Wrestling, and Vice's Dark Side of the Ring series is back. It re-debuted for season two over the past couple of days with an in-depth look at the Chris Benoit tragedy. And if you've seen the show before, you might know roughly what to expect. They really deep dive on some of the darkest days in wrestling history. But as you might expect, this special two-hour episode was the heaviest thing they've ever done. Vice really went all in on this. They've recruited everyone you can think of close to the situation, apart from Kevin Sullivan and maybe Vince McMahon. They've left no stone unturned. They've covered every possible angle of this. The result is one of the most harrowing pieces of television I personally can remember, and today I'm going to break it all down for you. I'm going to do so in a rough chronological order of how things went down on the show. Now, obviously this is a very well-worn topic. If you know about wrestling, you know what happened to Chris Benoit. So what I'm going to do today is focus on the topics that came to light on the episode that we didn't necessarily hear about beforehand. So with all that said, with all that in mind, I'm Andy for What Culture Wrestling, and here are 10 things we learned from Dark Side of the Ring, the Chris Benoit episode. Number 10, Benoit's self-discipline. Now we already knew that Chris Benoit was outrageously dedicated to his art, to his craft as a pro wrestler. But early on in the episode, Chris Jericho has a story that really outlines just how far he went to dedicate himself to the sport. They were wrestling in Japan. They were working a match one-on-one. -on -one. And uh, Jericho went for a spin kick. He missed it. He whiffed it. And Chris took this on, Benoit that is, took this on as some kind of grand failure. He felt he'd exposed the business. So even though, as Jericho noted, nobody probably noticed this. It was off by a tiny, tiny margin. He went backstage and he found Benoit doing squats. He said, What's up, man? And Benoit explained, well, I made a mistake. I've disgraced myself. I now need to do 500 squats to atone for that. Obviously, this is a very extreme form of self-punishment, but it's totally reframed later in the episode. The author of Ring of Hell, Matthew Randazzo V, explains that it was Chris Benoit's decision to do whatever it took, no matter the cost, to master his craft that ultimately led to what was going to be a tragic end no matter what. And when you think about his words and then relay it back to the Chris, ben, uh, the Chris Jericho story early on, it really knocks you for a loop. Number nine, Eddie Guerrero wanted Chris to find a higher power. And those are the words of Vicky Guerrero, not myself. Throughout this episode, at a certain point, we hear stories of just how religious Eddie was. Now, Chris himself wasn't a religious man, but one Christmas, Eddie gifted him a Bible, and Benoit carried that thing around with him wherever he went. He was always very receptive to Eddie. He loved his friendship with the guy, as we'll describe a little bit later on. And Eddie, well, he absolutely loved that even though his friend wasn't a man of God, he still carried that Bible everywhere he went. As Vicky explained, Chris always listened to Eddie. He was very receptive to him. And Eddie, in turn, he wanted to be a witness to Chris. He seemingly wanted him to find the fulfillment that he'd found from this higher power. It's obvious, however, that this never came to pass. Number nine, Eddie died in Chavo's arms. Chavo Guerrero is, of course, Eddie's nephew, and his description of what happened the morning Eddie passed away, is it's going to shake you. If you watch this show, it's going to have some kind of impact on you. So basically, they're at a hotel. It's, they're on tour. Chris is there. He's in a, they're all in separate rooms, obviously, but they agree to meet up the following morning for a workout. It's just what they did. 7 a.m., they'd get up. They'd get through the workout and they'd get on with their day. So Chavo wakes up. He's woken up by staff at the hotel. They say something's wrong with your uncle. He's missed his wake-up call. So they dash to his room. The thing is chain shut. So obviously there's somebody in there. They break in. They find Eddie face down on the bathroom floor. He's not gone just yet. Chavo rushes over. He cradles his uncle. He can hear him struggling to breathe. He describes a gurgling noise. And then Eddie slips away while he's in his nephew's arms. The story of Eddie's death was already an absolute tragedy, but hearing Chavo's experience of it, hearing about how his uncle passed away as he was holding him, while his voice is breaking up, while his eyes are tearing, 
it's something else. Number seven, Benoit's precise reaction to Eddie's passing. Of course, we already knew just how hard the passing of Eddie Guerrero took an impact on Benoit. The guys were best friends, they were like brothers. We've heard all kinds of stories in the past, but Vicky Guerrero shared a couple on this episode that cut straight through your heart, man. I mean, she's talking about having Chris over at the house after Eddie's passing. He goes missing, she goes upstairs, and she finds him on Eddie's side of the bed, sobbing his heart out. There's another story about uh, Vicky and Eddie's kids, sorry. They're kept up at night because Chris is in Eddie's gym. He's sitting at the equipment. Eddie had this beautiful gym that Vicky describes in the book. And Chris is in there and he's just breaking down. And the thing about all of this is that we're told that you wouldn't have known from the way he acted around the wrestlers that there was anything particularly wrong with Benoit. He put on his stone face, he got on with it there, and when he got home, he just let it out, man. But, you know, the obvious exception to that is the funeral. At Eddie Guerrero's funeral, Chris Jericho describes Benoit sobbing into his jacket so much that the tears seeped through his shoulder, got down through the shirt and onto his skin. He describes the most desperate hug he has ever received from a man who just lost a brother. Number six, Nancy really wanted Chris to stop wrestling. In the final stages of Chris Benoit's life, it became very apparent to those around him that continuing in pro wrestling was having a detrimental impact on the man and his well-being. And we learn on Dark Side of the Ring that Nancy actually wanted him to stop for much of that final year. Nancy, his wife, his life partner, knew that staying in wrestling after what had happened to Eddie, staying in that environment, doing that profession, was having a terrible impact on Chris's health mentally and physically. Chris was just so stricken with grief and so affected that Nancy knew staying in the sport wasn't going to be good for his well-being and ultimately, tragically, she was correct. Number five, the attitude towards chair shots. From Chris Jericho on this episode, we learned an expansion of what we already knew about pro wrestling's cavalier attitude to chair shots which almost certainly contributed towards the extreme CTE that Christopher Nowinski and his peers found in Benoit's brain after he'd passed. In Jericho's words, it was considered a badge of honour. You just tightened yourself up, you gritted your teeth, you stood there like this, and you got ready to take a full-blown, unprotected chair shot to the skull. It was just the done thing, and if you got a concussion, the attitude within the business was to shake it off, because if you weren't doing it, you looked bad, because everyone else was. Things have changed now in wrestling, and it's very, very rare that you see any kind of unprotected chair shot, but as you sit there, you listen to Chavo, he's describing his own experiences with CTE and how his own story might end in the context of the Benoit tragedy. Yeah, it hits you really hard, and I guarantee that if you don't already win watching old footage of unprotected chair shots, you certainly will after hearing this. Number four, nobody from WWE reached out to the family. I've got a direct quote here from Sandra Toffoloni, that's Nancy's sister, when she was asked during the show if anyone from the company reached out to her in the wake of the tragedy. Is that a serious question? Not a single person. David Benoit, Chris's son from another marriage, claimed that Chris Jericho and Chavo Guerrero reached out to him, but nobody else. The company backed off of him as if he didn't even exist. Internally, WWE's attitude was extreme distancing, and it got to the extent that the only representative they sent to Benoit's funeral was poor old Jim Ross. So he walked in and Sandra, of course, understandably, is apoplectic. She, in her own words, loses her cool and tells Ross not to turn up to the wake. She describes the whole situation as garbage. It's all work, it's insincere, it's fake, and it's awful. And knowing the situation, hearing her words, how could anyone argue with how she reacted? It's awful. Number three, we need to remember Nancy and Daniel a lot more. As wrestling fans, when we talk about this situation, it's very natural to hone in on Chris, on what happened to him, on the circumstances that led to what happened to him, and the impact that these events had on the industry. And as a result, it's very easy to forget that in all of this, two completely innocent human beings 
had their lives taken away. All of the accounts of Nancy are of a warm, caring figure and a tremendous, loving mother. And Chris Jericho goes into her as a performer, calling her a Hall of Famer across the board, giving her credit for innovating her style of management and laying a blueprint for others to copy for decades beyond that. And we even see that from the footage of her early work alongside Kevin Sullivan. We hear a lot less about Daniel on the show, but he is put across as someone like his mother who was very much loved. And in Jericho's words, it's like uh, these people, these innocent family members were blackballed from the world as a result of what Chris had done. Really, this is a side of the situation that needs to be explored a lot more. And I give Vice full credit for giving it the time. Number two, Chris Jericho reconnected Sandra and David. As was often the case in season one of Dark Side of the Ring, the episode closed on a ray of light, a moment of hope through all this darkness, as we heard the story of how Chris Jericho brought Sandra and David back together. Sandra called Jericho a wrestling angel come to life, because he understood that the experiences that David and Sandra were going through were unique to them, only they understood each other's grief, and it was therefore very important that they reconnect after growing apart in the aftermath of what happened. They have the same perspective and experiences, and David describes the whole thing as picking up where they left off before all this terrible stuff happened. And I think Sandra's words really sum this whole thing up rather beautifully. She said that she has never felt so grateful to see a loved one than when she saw David for the first time since this went down. Her nephew, of course. On their own, these innocent people went through hell. They really struggled. Together, at least maybe they can find a semblance of closure. And at number one, this tragedy needed this kind of treatment. It's not about downplaying what happens, because let me make this very clear, there aren't strong enough words that I can use to accurately convey just how monstrous the actions of Chris Benoit were and how horrible this situation truly is. But you need the experiences, you need the stories of the people who were there, because for a long, long time, this guy was a worker, he was a friend, he was a father to these people. So it's important that you see the dedicated wrestler. It's important that you see the family man, and then you see the horrors that unfolded and the man he became. This is vital because all of this is the story of Chris Benoit. You can't have one piece without the other. These people, their different experiences and their different stories are absolutely vital because in order to understand what Chris Benoit became, to, in order to understand what happened, you need to understand the man he was before and the journey that took him to where things ended. And personally, I thought Dark Side of the Ring did an absolutely tremendous job of doing just that. Anyway guys, that's it. That's my take on the Chris Benoit episode of Dark Side of the Ring. Now obviously this is a heavy, heavy topic, so by all means, head down to the comment section, but keep it smart, keep it intelligent, keep it tasteful, and keep it respectful. I think that's very, very important. But once you've done all that, I mean, do it right now. If you haven't already, check out the episode. It is a tremendous piece of pro wrestling filmmaking. And really, I think, a vital watch. A sad, a brutal, uh, really impactful watch, but a vital one. I'll see you later.